Now let's talk briefly about Aviatrix with an overview of the problem statement and where we come into the picture. When businesses migrate from on-premises or on-prem to the public cloud, they find things done quite differently. As an enterprise, even if you're used to building highly performant and resilient applications, when you move to the cloud, you'll find that while you can build with more agility and scale, you end up having less control than what you have in on-prem. In fact, the biggest reason enterprises move to the cloud is the ability to deploy applications with greater speed and agility. It was really the application developers who led the charge on this front. They realized that with a simple swipe of a credit card, they could deploy in the cloud a database or a web server or a Kubernetes cluster within minutes. Whereas on-prem, they would have to work with their IT teams to get that infrastructure deployed, which could take a very long time and usually require some sort of budget approval. And so shadow IT became a thing in the cloud. It was really the urgency of DevOps that triggered this move. And then networking and security teams found themselves lagging behind. Networking is all about routers and switches and load balancers and layer 4 and layer 7 firewalls and advanced protection gateways, such as intrusion prevention systems and threat intelligence. And they don't fit in the picture of the public cloud the same way they do in on-prem. It's not a one-to-one -one mapping when going to the cloud, because the cloud offers its own set of infrastructure services that provide the foundation for building your application. What that means is, from a networking and security standpoint, the center of gravity in the public cloud has flipped on its end. In on-prem, for applications to be accessible from the internet or to go out to the internet, they usually have to go through a DMZ where some inspection takes place for security and compliance reasons. It's not like that in the public cloud. With some CSPs, you give an application a public IP and it becomes immediately accessible from the internet. This is a very different model that enterprises need to grapple with. So you may be thinking, well, what's the big deal? It turns out even something as fundamental to networking as a route table is handled differently by each CSP. Moreover, in the cloud, we see new constructs such as identity and management, IM, accounts, subscriptions, and tenants. And each CSP has its own unique flavor of IAM. And each CSP has its own unique flavor of managed services to provide networking and security. So to summarize, application developers led the move to the public cloud and networking and security teams have had to play catch up. Managing this complexity and having an agile, secure operations model to adapt to the business needs is a huge challenge. And add to that the different directions from where application workloads and resources in the cloud need to be accessed from or need to reach out to. Let's take a step back and discuss why businesses move to the public cloud in the first place. The ultimate goal is to deliver an agile consumer experience by using the public cloud. What that means is they want to use the public cloud to adapt quickly to meet the needs of their end customers. When an enterprise makes the move to public cloud, they typically either move their apps to the cloud as is, which is called lift and shift, or they completely rewrite their apps, which is called refactoring. Either way, they want this process to be as smooth and seamless as possible. And keep in mind that often they will need to leverage multiple clouds and will require secure connectivity between those clouds. Enterprises need to adhere to various compliance and governance models in order to grow their business. That means having a defense in depth or multi-layered security approach and the ability to provide isolation and segmentation to different environments such as business units. Another key driver for moving to the public cloud is the agility that the cloud offers. So quick app turnaround is critical. But equally important is application uptime. And for that to happen, and for enterprises to meet their service level agreements, their SLAs, the network operation centers and the security operation centers, the NOCs and SOCs, must be enabled and empowered with single pane of glass operations. So how can enterprises be enabled to meet these goals? Well, first and foremost, there is the networking. We're all familiar with the term plumbing. An application can perform only as well as the underlying network infrastructure. And that infrastructure extends from end to end. In the public cloud, it covers all directions, to a cloud, from a cloud, within a cloud, and between clouds. And the networking must be able to scale up, scale out, across multiple paths at high throughput. When security is implemented properly at all layers, an enterprise will be able to insert advanced security services, segment their traffic in accordance to their policies, provide end-to-end -end encryption, 
and inspect inbound and or outbound traffic. And they can do this in a reliable and predictable manner. And finally, when an enterprise is able to automate the lifecycle of their infrastructure in a secure manner, when they're provided with a repeatable architecture with deep visibility and troubleshooting tools, then they can not only meet their SLAs, but they can also reduce their mean time to resolution. Now let's go a little deeper into some of the challenges that enterprises face in the public cloud. Let's draw an analogy with home furnishing brands like Home Depot or Ikea. They're very easy to get started with. And CSPs are often like these brands. There's almost no barrier to entry. You can just provide your credit card information to get started. And let's talk about this from the perspective of how you build, operate, and grow your environment. With the home furnishing companies, you just follow the directions to pick up the furniture you're interested in, and you go build it by following their instructions. And that's okay for small projects, but for larger ones, the experience is not as pleasant. And that's exactly how CSPs work. They give you the basic constructs, for example, they provide you with the virtual private clouds, the VPCs, the route tables, the subnets, the compute instances, and then you have to figure out what to do with those constructs, how to put them together in order to house your apps. And there's no best practices reference architecture from a networking perspective. Networking is not the forte of the CSP. Networking is not the reason why enterprises move to the public cloud in the first place. It's all about the app. And from an operations perspective, they lack a mature toolkit for operating the environment from a networking standpoint. You may have basic tools like flow logs with some export capability, but with limited visualization. There are no tools to easily troubleshoot or to quickly troubleshoot issues. And remember, when you have a network operation center, a NOC, with certain skills for troubleshooting in an on-prem environment, when they're responsible for operating the public cloud, they'll be put in a very difficult position now, when you need to grow, let's say you need to expand from a single region to multiple regions or to another cloud, which is an irreversible and rapidly growing trend, none of the CSPs is incentivized to help you. Always remember, it's not in the best interest of a CSP to provide multi-cloud support, and some CSPs even refrain from using the term multi-cloud. So you're pretty much left on your own when it comes to expansion beyond a single cloud. So these are the biggest challenges enterprises face when going to the public cloud. Now let's see how Aviatrix can help. Aviatrix helps businesses build the right way, the enterprise great way, in a secure and agile manner. We don't just work on a use case implementation manner. Instead, we follow an architectural approach. Our reference architecture is called Multi-Cloud Network Architecture, or MCNA, and it helps you make sure that you're not locked into any single CSP vendor. With MCNA, you're able to securely build, operate, and grow in a repeatable manner. You can do this in a deterministic way as your business dictates. Next, we build the operational capabilities from on-prem into the cloud. What we mean by that is your network operations teams are familiar with the network engineer's toolkit, which include ICMP-based tools such as ping and traceroute, packet capture, and NetFlow. These are the tools that they have relied heavily upon when operating on-premises. In the public cloud, these tools are mostly absent. CSP networking constructs that are PaaS offerings, platform as a service, they don't allow you to run these standard tools from them. But Aviatrix enables operations teams to use these tools. We are always multi-region ready and multi-cloud ready. So when you need to grow, Aviatrix is there to help. And over the course of this training, we'll go into more details as to how we do that. Often the question comes up, where does Aviatrix fit in the ecosystem of independent software vendors, or ISVs? And the answer is, Aviatrix, as a born-in-the-cloud company, is all about cloud networking. Yes, we help enterprises connect to the cloud, but through our deep partnerships with each CSP, AWS, Azure, GCP, OCI, and Alibaba Cloud, we help enterprises securely grow their business in the cloud. In the next module, we'll cover the fundamentals of public cloud networking.